Okay, so I've got the two brick propane forge fired up here. Uh, it's been preheating for about 20 minutes. Um, it's a small forge. Um, I call it a forge. It's called a forge. I don't forge with it. It's more suited for heat treating temperatures, about 1500 degrees. Um, if I push it, I could kind of get forging temperatures in some smaller pieces, um, but it's just more for heat treating. Um, I really like it. It's it's pretty good on propane consumption. Um, I've got this. It's called the Burnsomatic TS8000. I got it at Home Depot. It's fifty dollars. Um, it's a little bit lower heat output than if you buy a, like a Venturi burner for some place and build your own. Um, but I calculated it. It costs about seventy cents an hour to run it at full blast. So for that reason alone, and that it works pretty well, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm actually kind of happy that it doesn't get up to four big temperatures because that just means it's more difficult to overheat my steel um, the heat treating, and I like that. Um, so uh, I've got a knife right here. Um, it's been in for uh, a quick second. Um, I had I have to, to refilm this part, so I put it in there and taken it out. Um, so it's hot right now. Um, but what I'm hoping to do um, right now is uh, to get a couple of thermal cycling thermal cycles in. I'm going to start with a normalizing cycle and then uh, anneal it. And so it's normalized. I'm just going to heat it up to uh, critical temperature, which is about 1475. And then I'm just going to let it air cool until it's black. Um, and then I'm going to anneal it, which I'll do the same thing. I'll heat it up to critical temperature and then I'll put it in this bucket of vermiculite, which is just uh, insulates it. And it'll cool very slowly. By several hours, it'll take to cool off. Um, and hopefully, that will refine the grain structure. Uh, and then after that cools, um, after a couple hours, I'll come back and I'll give it three more normalizing cycles, uh, one at critical temperature, one at non-medic, non-magnetic, which is 1425, uh, and then one just a little below all that, hopefully that'll refine the grain structure. So when we clay quench it, and we etch it, we have a real nice um, quench line, and there's no alloy banding uh, or anything bad like that. Um, I suspect it's mostly cosmetic, and some like alloy banding doesn't really affect Deal as much, but uh, if my customers are going to be paying several hundred dollars for a handmade knife, I want them to have the very best knife that they can have, regardless uh, if it's silly or not. So um, I usually I go by color to tell when I'm at non-magnetic, and that might sound pretty hokey, but I think I've got it down to a pretty good science. I kind of laugh at the guys who think that they need fancy ovens with temperature gauges or simple carbon steel because um, I just looked for the decalescence which uh, the decalescence is when you bring steel up to non-magnetic and then a little higher to critical temperature uh, what happens is the carbon dissolves in the steel and that's an endothermic reaction meaning it, it requires energy it absorbs energy and so you can visibly see the steel regardless of whether you see cherry red or bright orange or yellow, everybody sees it differently. You'll see the color stabilize and just stay there. What it's doing is it's just absorbing energy. And then after that, when it's done with that process, you'll visibly see it bright. And that's the deck lessons. And it took me a long time before I was able to see it. And when I'm showing other people and they can't see it, what I'll do is I'll show them the reverse deck lessons. And that's the process of the carbon coming out of the solution and grouping up again. And it's an exothermic reaction. So you take it out, and it's, I see it bright orange. And then it'll cool off to a dull red, and you'll see it brighten up again, and then cool off. And I think it's pretty cool. Um, and that's the reverse deck of lessons. And so I'll try and show you that on the first normalizing cycle. I don't know if it's going to show up on this camera. Um, and hopefully, I'll even be able to see it going up. Because um, I'm using more ambient light than I usually do. Um, to try and get the camera to see some of these colors instead of
instead of bright white, which I suspect it will anyways. Um, I, I used to try and heat treat at night, um, but there's just something about needing the ambient light from a half-open garage door to be able to see the decalescence. Um, I don't really have a sound explanation for it, I just can't see it at night. It's just monochromatic to me. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it in and turn this light off and I'll have my respirator on uh, just in case. You know, this stuff does produce carbon monoxide, burning propane, and also spilled oil on the forge, so it smokes pretty bad. So that's where the respirator is to be safe so I won't be able to talk. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to uh, record the reverse decalescence and uh, get this show on the road. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but it's just a tinge brighter on the edge. And that's what we're talking about with the decalescence. And the tip. I want to make sure to have a nice even color. I don't know if it shows, but about an inch below the tip, there's a, uh, a little dark spot, it's a little cooler. And so I'm just moving it back and forth, getting an even heat, not overheating any of the areas. I'm spending, sp paying close attention to keep the, the blade near the handle area uh, heated as well. 